Hi everyone, looks like tonight we have a MacBook Air. This is an 820-3437 uh, with some unknown issue. Let's go ahead and plug it in and find out what. Okay, looks like we are not turning on. So you see that little fan? That little fan is not spinning, which means we have a no power issue. So let's go ahead and pull this board out of the enclosure and start with a visual inspection. All right, let's go over the usual areas that a MacBook Air usually corrodes. That is Q71. Um, 80 and that looks nicely soldered by the Apple factory. That's fine though. Um, PB3, PB4, 2 area is relatively unremarkable. JTAG is unremarkable. Right here is unremarkable except for some hairs and dust. Backlight, uh, I mean um, LVDS area is pretty clean. I don't see anything wrong there. There is a little bit of corrosion right there so we do know that this may be liquid damaged. Um, this all looks okay. Moving on to the ISL, that looks okay. The TPS 51980 has some slight corrosion. What is this? Hmm. This looks like a problem. Now, what does this area do? Hmm. We'll come back to that in a second. Let's continue on. This is our backlight circuit. That looks really nice, as you can tell. Some little corrosion there, but that doesn't really concern me. Moving on to PCH area. Or PCH support area, I should say. A little bit of corrosion by U1950, but nothing too severe. CPU V-Core area looks okay. Uh, a lot of people um, mistake probe, probe points that look like this for liquid damage, and they are not. This is just areas of uh, just the color of the brass in manufacturing. So, okay, so we have corrosion right here. Now, what are these traces? So look at these traces. These look pretty bad. So this does not look healthy, as you could probably tell. This looks all corroded and just not good. So let's get a tweezer and let's scrape away at some of this and see what we see. So we notice that this, this trace right here is just coming off like there's nothing there. Let's go ahead and get a Q-tip and alcohol and touch that up a little bit. Not touch up, but clean up. So we can see it better. And let's go ahead and look at what this is on the board view file. So let's open that up. This is an 820-3437. Come on. Come over to the monitor I want. Thirty four thirty seven. Okay, so our corrosion was right over in this area. So here is U nineteen hundred. Let's look at what the PDF this is for. This is system power RTC po system RTC power source and thirty two kilohertz clock generator. That is very important because without a clock the computer will not work. Now this isn't your time clock, this is gonna be the clock that puts the PCH and CPU and RAM, all that stuff on a timer so they can each talk to each other and get stuff done instead of just a nonsense mess of noise. But this is the area that was corroded right here. It looks like it would be this resistor right here, R6123. Now, SPI Meso R. Wonder what that is. Let's go ahead and look at that on the uh, PDF file, which seemed to disappear. So we will just carry on here. This is going to go over to here, to this resistor. Um, SPI Meso goes over here to our CPU. Now, this is very important because in order for the CPU to know what to do, it needs to communicate to the BIOS. The BIOS is going to tell the CPU what to do next and all kinds of instructions. So without communication to the BIOS, this will not turn on. A board will not turn on if you do not have communication to the BIOS. So they are going to be connected through a series of SPI termination resistors right here. See, we have a bunch from here, but this is going to be the main concern. We also have a corroded probe point right there, so the trace is most likely no good. So we we may have to run a wire over here to R6113. We don't know yet. We won't know until we get this all cleaned up. So let's go ahead and jump right into this and go ahead and start taking care of these corroded areas. I'm going to put some Amtec NC559 flux down. There's some corrosion right over here, too. Let's go ahead and start pulling off these resistors that are bad and replace them with resistors that are better. And would you know, 
look at that. Does this probe point, does this trace look like, look like it would be efficiently conducting electricity? No. There is, so, oh, if you don't know, this is what a healthy pad looks like, like something like right here. Okay, something like that. And we have this right here. That is not going to be able to pass electricity through very efficiently whatsoever. So we need to take care of that. We're going to scrape a little bit and make that pad look better. So we're just going to scrape away at that copper. Same thing right here. This doesn't concern me too much. This is just a probe point for measuring, so I'm not too concerned about this, but this right here is a problem. Um, same with right here. So this may be a problem as well. We'll come back to that. We're going to scrape and then put some uh, solder on top of that and see what that does. So let's go ahead and uh, put more some more flux down. Put some near the BIOS too, because those pins are a little bit corroded. Those can use some help. Same thing right here. And I'll give a little uh, the clock chip a little reflow too. I used to replace clock chips every time they were corroded, but what I learned is that is really not necessary if the chip is working right. Um, it was a misconception that a little bit of water touches the clock chip and it dies. That is not true. So my criteria for replacement is when any of the pins are um, heavily oxidized, I'll replace it because if the pins are heavily oxidized, that could mean that the chip did sustain damage. So it had enough uh, current going through it to ground there or to another rail that caused the pad to the uh, pin to oxidize like that, then I could think that the chip would be damaged as well. But if there is no damage to the pins or anything, then I would not think the chip would be damaged. Of course, that should be used as a guideline only and will not represent every case that you get. So take that for granted and apply your own diagnostic strategies to the cases that you do see. So we have some flux down and solder. We're just going to scrape away at the areas that are corroded and remove all that junk that was down there. I'm going to go with a little bit more flux. I'm actually just going to kind of flood this area because we need, we need a good amount. I want this area especially, like all these... Uh, little probe points right here to have solder completely across them and when there's a little oxidation it could be a pain sometimes we just gotta keep keep at it but on the plus side we can now put a resistor there it's nice and clean there perfect should be good for that. Let's go ahead and put some re new resistors down. Let's grab a 820-3437 donor board. And while I'm replacing these, the heat will take care of any corrosion that's under the clock chip or BIOS, solving that issue. Some more flux, and anytime you see it starts to get a little bit dry there, add some more flux.
there. And once this cools down, we'll go ahead and test it and then uh, take care of the other issues on the board like this uh, lovely backlight circuit right here. So this will be a nice easy one as well. That circuit's not a problem. Just want to let this cool down for a second. All right, let's go ahead and plug this little board in and let's see if that little fan spins. And that is a spinning fan. These uh, E203437 boards will power cycle a couple times before finally spinning. So I will let it finish that cycle. It's going to do it one more time after this and then it should start fully. That's completely normal. And that is a spinning fan, a constant spinning fan. So the power issue is fixed. Let's go ahead and address that backlight issue. All right, some flux for the backlight circuit and thunderbolt circuit. That is off. We'll go ahead and um, clean this up with some leaded solder and then we will use um, our wick and then place a new chip there. We're also going to check our feedback because feedback is very important in the circuit and it is something that very commonly fails. Let's get our solder wick. If I could find where I set it down, that would be great. All right, let's go ahead and check feedback. So what we're going to do is get our meter on, and we're going to check continuity from pin 5 over to these two probe points, super easy to do, so if you're ever doing a backlight driver replacement, always do this, let me zoom out so you guys can see what I'm doing, so we're going to check from pin 5, pin 5 is right here, so pin 5 over to this one, right here, and then over to this one, and it looks like, nope, we're good. So our feedback trace is fine. We can go in for a new chip. So let's go ahead and put a little bit of flux. I don't like to overuse flux on BGA stuff because it tends to make it a little bit harder. We're going to grab an LP8550. If you can't get an LP8550, an LP8552 will work just as good. Probably 53 will work too, but I have not personally tested 53. So stick with 550 or 52. Both are readily available from Mauser, Texas Instruments, any of those places. Don't overpay for backlight drivers. Like I see people that buy them on eBay for like $15 for a couple of them. Don't do that. want to heat this up until it bounces around like that that's done that's soldered let's go ahead and let it cool down then we'll test it in the enclosure and see if we get backlight and image all right as you can see here this is booted look at this i don't want to really show their name you can't really see it there but this is booted this is a working fixed macbook air so thank you for watching and i hope this uh, video helps you solve your problem if your board has a similar issue thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video